Hey, good afternoon. My name is Will. We're going to take care of a little bit of house cleaning and then we will jump straight into a uh, demo of ArcSight Intelligence and Interset. So first things first, um, some of what I say here may change in future releases. Um, some of it has as we've moved along. So just write your, your standard disclaimers. And then a little bit about me. Hey, I started out using ArcSight uh, myself uh, quite a while ago, switched over my current role in, wow, can't believe it's been that long, 2014. So I, I've been at this for a couple of minutes anyhow. Um, with that, let's kind of move on in and take a look. All right, sorry about that. Took a little bit longer than I thought it would. So here we are. This is the primary interface for ArcSight Intelligence. What I'm gonna demo for you today is just kind of some of the uh, functionality of the, the main interfaces and walk through a pretty quick um, investigation of an end user. So this overall risk page, pretty simplistic, right? I start out up here with uh, a bunch of numbers, move down to a smaller number, and then uh, got some pretty graphics. So let me talk about the numbers first. Why ArcSight Intelligence and why Interset? Um, boiled down to a couple of real simple sentences. Um, what we're looking for is a tool that will help us take billions of events and distill those down to a handful of really useful anomalies that we can investigate. More importantly, if we couple this with other tools, like our SEM, we can take these weighted risk scores and apply that to intelligence within the SEM. Um, and as I kind of move through this, some of that will make sense. Um, what I've got here are my 11 different types of data that I could have in the system. Today, I've only got five different types. So you can see those are highlighted and the others grayed out. And then another nice thing is the system gives me a visual representation of the threats within my system. Today, we're going to take a look at execution and possibly lateral movement as we investigate one of our users. And so I'll go through a couple of other screens here real quickly. Okay, do when that happens. So this next one here is the entities page. And this just kind of gives us a numerical scoring of individual entities right now. Um, I'm looking at machines and you can see that they're color coded. So as the risk goes down, the color coding steps away from red. If I go back over to users, I can see my top risky users. And then I can go into an explore window. Now the explore window is fairly simple to use. I've got a slider over here that lets me get rid of individual uh, anomalies or violations. And so I can click on them and add them back or I can use the slider. I'm a real fan of using the slider. So you'll see me use that later. And I can also zoom into a particular area in the timeline. I can reach them um, say 24 hours, seven days, right? Uh, not, not real earth shattering, but you guys get the idea. The other thing that I can do is I can look at individual users and I can see what their score looks like over time. A little bit of heuristics. I can also see their maximum risk and when that occurred. I can also see any tags that were assigned by the system or my fellow analysts as they were looking at individual users. I can also see work hours. And so this will become interesting as we delve into that investigation of an individual. Um, the nice thing here is this is unsupervised machine learning. What that means is, no one had to sit down and program the system to know that this user, and I think this was Sebastian. So we didn't have to tell the system, Sebastian comes in about nine and he leaves about six every day. Um, it just learned that itself of something that's also interesting here is it looks like in this environment, Sebastian has Mondays off most days as well as Sunday. So Tuesday to Saturday, so Saturday work um, is usual for this individual. Um, another thing I can do is pop over and take a look. So we have a, a 
event viewer that we can use to jump in and take a look at other individual pieces of data. I won't run through too much of that. Um, and before I start my actual investigation, I'd like to show you a little bit about the API because it's one of the questions we get quite regularly is how do I interface with other systems? So as you can see, I'm in Swagger. We love Swag Swagger. We've got PDF documents and everything else, but Swagger is just right. Uh, it's a really easy way to take a look at things. And so I popped open the information. I'm going to go down and take a look at individual session information. And so what I can do is take a look here. Now, I'm not an HTML coder. I'm not a developer by any stretch. So, uh, but I do understand the basics, right? So status code. One of the th first things I learned was the status code is what you get whenever something executes or whenever it, it, it terminates the program. We've all seen a 404 or a 504, right? 404, we know page not found. 504, page temporarily not found. This status code 200 is what the programmer would expect when this executes properly. It gives them a sample of code to take a look at. It also lets them try it out. The nice thing about try it out is it gives them a command line browser option using curl. It also gives them a traditional web browser URL and it gives them the response body. So what this system is going to give them back, it gives them a sample of what that's going to look like. It also reminds them what the response code and what the headers are for that. Using this information, it's fairly simple for a good developer to grab that information and integrate it with the rest of your tools. Let's go back in over here. We'll go back to uh, overall risk. Now, I'm going to jump in into an investigation of my riskiest user. So I click on the individual, I come back to that explore page. Now you see that individual is now the filter. If I click up in here, I can add or remove other filters as I go through my investigation and I will show you that. So first thing I wanna do is come down, take a look at the individual. And I can see that they had a, a small spike in here after a relatively calm period so something has occurred in here, looks like about the 14th of February, and then they really spiked on the 21st. I rolled down a little bit longer. There's that work hours that we discussed earlier. Individual tags assigned to the individual. Nobody's really uh, marked up any notes on this person yet, so we're first. Same thing, it looks like Tuesday through Saturday is pretty common for this department or group. Um, since that Sebastian had pretty much the same work patterns that uh, Tara here does. So let's jump in and take a look and see what's going on. And we mentioned this early February. So let's click on one of these individual dots and see what's going on. It looks like she attempted to access a domain controller that nobody else had before. Uh, that's interesting. So, Okay, we can see the individual results by clicking on individual dots. I do the one above as well. And it looks like it gave me the login type and it looks like she only, uh, she looks like she's a, a rare user of this system. So she and her other uh, coworkers are rare. The nice thing here is I get a slider about how anomalous this activity is. If other people routinely logged into it, it would be down here. If only, say, uh, a certain class of administrator, it would move closer to the center. Those sliders can come in handy, and I'll show you some later. So let's go in, take a look at full 30 days. So I bring it all back to this is all the information. And so that didn't look too serious. It looks like maybe some discovery activity around this time frame as she logged into some servers. Let's go over here and see what's going on. This looks like where we really run into some problems. So I'm going to zoom in on that and I'm going to drag this up. Okay. And so I see a lot of information in here. Let me click on this, this orange dot yet again. And so it was unusual for her to access that domain controller. So we've kind of noticed a trend here that she's accessing a domain controller that nobody else does. Let me reset the data. 
come back in. You know what? I'm just going to roll it all the way up and be a cowboy. Take a look at the really extreme issues going on here with Tara. So the first thing I can see is that she has a process that nobody else has executed. Now, this EXE, if, if only everybody made it that easy for us, right? Sometimes they hide it as notepad.exe, calculators or whatever. But in this case, we can see this person's been running a crypto mine or in our environment. And that is extremely unusual, right? So now we can kind of put together what's going on. This person has done some discovery of some not too heavily used systems in our environment. And most likely they loaded this software on those boxes that nobody else is using, hoping to get away with crypto mining in our environment. Let me roll down, take a look. Here's this other unusual login and we can see that pops up as well. Um, we don't need to view the event, we'll just keep on going. Come down, um, this is also interesting. They used PowerShell. That may be the deployment mechanism they used to actually put the executable on a system. Um, it looks like they've, they've done that in the past. So there's probably other systems out there I need to go and take a look at. Um, but I can see with text here um, that this anomalous activity, right? Uh, is, is indicated by them running this executable or this process. Because that's PowerShell, it's not that big of a deal, but in conjunction with the crypto miner, uh, we've got an issue here for sure. And to roll back down, you know what? And on this one here, if I opened this up and this was uh, something I wasn't too worried about, maybe PowerShell is becoming more and more adopted through my users, I could weight that individual score simply using a tuner, I can bring that down. Or if we know that people are using PowerShell um, inappropriately in our environment, we could go ahead and we could raise it up. The nice thing is it tells me how many anomalies I'm going to affect. And in this case, I'm gonna impact six anomalies when I adjust that slider. And then finally, I'll pop down here to this very last one. Looks like they worked an unusual hour doesn't tell me what the hour is. So I click into it. And the nice thing here is we saw previously what their work hours were and we get a real nice line that clearly delineates how far outside of normal this activity really is. And so it's very simple to see how far from normal work hours this activity is. If I wanted to add that to a case, um, my whatever case management, my SIM or something else. Um, in the past, I would take a screenshot. Nice thing with systems like this, is I just click on the blue button, it creates a PDF. The PDF pops up and it has all the information that I want. Um, not earth shattering, right? But I go ahead and show it to you. And so it provided me this nice PDF that I could attach to my case with all of my individual targeted uh, icons, as well as any notes that I may have put down here. So that's the Interset system. As you saw, we generate scores for users uh, and other machines from zero to 100. So unlike other systems that could generate a score of 12,002 or something else, um, easy to use zero to 100, the system is self-learning. It learns hours worked, normal behaviors. It's got a very nice library of individual type activities that are unauthorized and authorized. And um, I can come over here and highlight some of that. So the system's models will actually detect unusual behavior. In this case, I noticed in this environment, that lateral movement is the major problem for my environment. Um, and once again, that's uh, the system. Pretty easy to demo, pretty easy to use, very significant tool. It uh, adds a lot of capability to your arsenal. Um, once again, you noticed that I didn't have any place where I wrote rules. I didn't train the system what the work hours were. The idea here is to use it with your favorite sim and go ahead and use these risk scores to find bad actors in your network. Thank you very much for your time.